let's go back to our imaginary desert camp in the 7th century and listen to our beloved prophet talking to his disciples about what he saw. Friends, I want to tell you what I saw when I time traveled to the hereafter. In the beginning, there was an angel called Israfil, holding a trumpet. He blew in the trumpet and everything suddenly changed. The earth was shook so hard in a way that never happened before. Everything on it was immediately destroyed. No cities, no roads, no buildings, nothing was left. The land split open and every dead person was resurrected. Everyone, from Adam to the last day, their bodies were reconstructed and they emerged from their graves. قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون People were so confused and terrified saying Woe to us Who has resurrected us from our resting place This is what the all merciful has promised And the messengers have spoken the truth خاشعة أبصارهم يخرجون من الأجداث كأنهم جراد منتشر Terrified as they were They started to run randomly like swarming locusts. Then the sun expanded until it became so big, its edge became so close above us. Around the area where the moon is right now, it became extremely hot. But by the will of God, somehow people did not die. They stayed alive in the excruciating heat, running around looking for shade. فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرْ وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وذر But when the sight was stunned and the moon was dimmed and the sun and the moon were brought together on that day one will cry where is the escape but no there is no escape They ran looking for a mountain to hide behind but they didn't find any all the mountains were gone they became like soft wool يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش They ran looking for water, looking for oceans or seas, but they didn't find any. Some of them were resurrected in tiny bodies, some were as big as an ant. People were giants to them. These were the arrogant people. Some of them were resurrected blind, and they said, God, why did you resurrect me blind? I had sight in my first life. And it was said to him, just as our revelations and signs came to you and you neglected them, so today you are being neglected. قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرة قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى The severity of this day is unimaginable. Every nursing mother abandoned what she was nursing. And every pregnant woman delivered her burden prematurely. All of that out of fear. And I saw people as if they were drunk, though they were not drunk, but the torment of Allah was terribly severe. يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد. What do you think happened next? You might guess that everyone was judged based on their deeds, right? Actually, no. Nothing happened. Nothing happened for a very long time. Do you know how long that day was? تعرج الملائكة والروح إليه في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة. فاصبر صبرا جميلا. The angels and the Holy Spirit will ascend to him on a day 50,000 years in length. So endure with beautiful patience. I know that most of you think that standing in a line for one hour is torture. But what I saw was that day was like 50,000 years of our time. الأخلاء يومئذ بعضهم لبعض عدو إلا المتقين. I saw close friends becoming enemies to each other. Each one accusing the other that he is the reason for his sins, blaming each other for their misguidance. إذ تبرأ الذين اتبعوا من الذين اتبعوا ورأوا العذاب وتقطعت بهم الأسباب. I saw people who followed their leaders and their celebrities blindly, fighting with them, saying, "You are the reason we are being punished now. You are the reason we're going to hellfire." And the leaders said, "It's not our fault." 
We didn't force you to follow us. وقال الذين اتبعوا لو أن لنا كرة فنتبرأ منهم كما تبرأوا منا كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم حسرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار. Then the followers said, if there were a second chance, we would have ignored you like you ignored us. We would disown you and never follow you, but it's too late. وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت, I saw baby girls who were killed by their own parents or buried alive being asked, why were you killed? What was your crime? يعرف المجرمون بسيماهم فيؤخذ بالنواصي والأقدام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هذه جهنم التي يكذب بها المجرمون يطوفون بينها وبين حميم آن I saw the wicked were being recognized by their appearance then were seized by their forelocks and feed to the hellfire not to enter it, not yet just to see it and see what will happen to them later. In front of Hellfire, the temperature was much, much higher than what they were experiencing before when the sun was over their heads. Every time they became extremely thirsty, they drank from extremely hot liquids that looked like molten lava. انطلقوا إلى ظل ذي ثلاث شعب لا ظليل ولا يغني من اللهب إنها ترمي بشرر كالقصر. It was said to them, you were looking for shades from the sun? Go look for shades next to hellfire. It has no shades and it does not protect you from the heat. On the contrary, it throws sparks. Each spark of them is as big as a fortress. إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم انقدرت Then the sun collapsed and its light was gone and the stars also disappeared. And the people were left there for years and years, standing and waiting for their inevitable judgment. But it never came. They were between waiting and fighting with each other, blaming each other, blaming their leaders, blaming their celebrities for deluding them, and nothing happened. Then people started to find their families. I saw men running away from their own loved ones. يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه. I saw men running away from their brothers, from their mothers, from their beloved life partners and from their own children. Everyone was only worried about himself. He didn't care when his own children kept screaming to him, Help, Father, please help us, Father. Nothing. After years and years of waiting, some people started saying, I can't wait 50,000 years like this. Start the judgment, please start the judgment. One of them even said, Start the judgment, even if I will go to hell. Just start it, please. I can't wait anymore. But there was no answer. They went to Adam, peace and blessing be upon him. They asked him to intercede with God to start the judgment. Adam replied, Nafsi, Nafsi, today my Lord has become angry as he has never become before, nor he will ever become thereafter. He forbade me to eat the fruit from the tree, but I disobeyed him. So I'm sorry, myself, myself. Go ask Noah for intercession. So they went to Noah, peace and blessing be upon him. Asked him to intercede, and Noah replied, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. Go ask someone else for intercession. Go to Ibrahim. So they went to Ibrahim, peace and blessing be upon him. And he replied, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. Go to someone else for intercession. Go to Moses. People kept looking for someone to intercede and everyone rejected them until they came to me and they told me, Muhammad, you are the seal of the prophets and God has forgiven your early and late sins. Please intercede for us with your Lord. Don't you see in what state we are? Then I went beneath Allah's throne and I fell in prostration before my Lord. And then Allah guided me to such praises and glorification to him as he has never guided anyone else before. 
Then it was said, O Muhammad, raise your head, ask, and it will be granted. Intercede, and it will be accepted. And I interceded, and only then judgment started. The rules were given to everyone. Everyone is going to receive a detailed record of their first life. Those who get the record with the right hand should not be worried. Those who get the record with their left hand should. People who know they were going to get the record with their left hand were so terrified. They actually tried to cheat their way out of it. Do you know what they did? They thought it was a smart idea to hide their left hand behind their backs and the right hand in front of them, trying to catch the record with the right hand while hiding their left. But actually what happened is, the record came from behind them, directly in their left hand, that they were trying to hide. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَصْرُورًا وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُو ثُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا Those who got the record with their left, they were terrified. They tried to run away from the judgment. But they couldn't because everyone had both a driver forcing him to his destination and a witness making sure that he doesn't lie during the judgment. Trying to defend themselves, they said, it's not our fault. It's the fault of my devil. He is the one who deluded me. The devil replied, no, I didn't delude you. You deluded yourself. And they started fighting with each other until it was said to them, قال لا تختصموا لدي وقد قدمت إليكم بالوعيد ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام للعبيد يوم نقول لجهنم هل امتلأت وتقول هل من مزيد Do not dispute in my presence since I had already given you a warning my word cannot be changed nor am I unjust to my creation then Allah asked hellfire are you full yet and it responded are there any more after that, everyone knew that he couldn't blame the devil. Their leaders, their celebrities, their influencers, you can't blame anyone for your misguidance. A balance was made for everyone to weigh his good deeds against his sins. And everyone started reading his record. The record was so long. It took everyone years to read his record. And everyone was asked about his life and how he consumed it, minute by minute. He was asked about his knowledge. What did he do with it? Was it useful knowledge or not? He was asked about his wealth. How did he earn it? And how did he dispose of it? It's not only about earning. And he was asked about his body. How did he wear it out? Some people tried to lie. Tried saying to Allah, No, I didn't do all of these sins written in my record. And this angel witness who is making testimony against me is a liar. At this moment, something amazing happened. Allah ordered his mouth to shut up. And he ordered his hands to talk, his legs to talk, his own body parts to testify against him. Then they started asking their skin furiously, Why have you testified against us? And it said, We have been made to speak by Allah. Who causes all things to speak? He is the one who created you the first time, and to him you are bound to return. وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْتَقَنَ اللَّهَ الَّذِي أَنْتَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ خَلَقَكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Then they started to offer ransom as a last resort. Take my children, take my wife, take my brother, take my whole family, take everything I owned, but please forgive me. But it was said to them, No. Indeed, it is the flame of hell, the remover of the exteriors. It invites in he who turned his back on the truth and went away from obedience. At this time, the criminals knew there was no way out. There was no escape from hellfire. 
out of regret and fear. Their eyes turned blue instead of white. They became blind. And everyone realized, believer or not, that they would have to pass on top of hellfire. Everyone. And they will have to pass on a very, very thin wire called the Sirat. This wire extends all the way across hellfire. On one side, all humanity. And on the other side, paradise. And under it, hellfire. The problem was that this thin wire was sharper than a sword. The moment you touched it, it cut you. Also, it had hooks, rotating hooks, one hook for every type of sin. For example, there was one hook that pulled down anyone who cut family ties. There is no way anyone could pass it except by the will of Allah. And everyone was asked to pass on it. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَيَرِدُهَا Allah gives the believers the strength they need to start the Sirat and also provided them with lights in their hands. They took the initiative and started passing on top of the Sirat, imagining the amazing destination waiting for them. The hypocrites followed them. Then I saw the hypocrites calling the believers from behind them. Wait for us. Let us share your lights. We don't have any lights of our own. We are afraid we might fall into hellfire. It was said mockingly, go back to the world, your first life, and seek a light there. Then a separating wall with a door was raised between them. Within it, it was mercy, and outside of it is punishment. The hypocrites called the believers, were we not with you? Weren't we living more or less the same lives? Going to the same schools, doing the same jobs, eating the same food, sleeping on the same beds? Why is there a wall between us now? And what is this door? They replied, yes, we were together, but you afflicted yourselves and awaited misfortune for us and doubted Allah. And wishful thinking deluded you until there came the command of Allah. And the deceiver, Satan, deceived you away from Allah. So today, no ransom will be accepted from you hypocrites, nor from the disbelievers. Your home is hellfire. It is the only fitting place for you. What a miserable destiny. And I saw how big hellfire is. I saw that for a man to fall into hellfire, it takes him 70 years just to fall to its bottom. I saw people whose tongues and lips being repeatedly cut by scissors of fire, then given new lips and then cut again, and then given new lips and then cut again. I asked Jibril, who are these people? He said, these are the people who advise others to do good and forget themselves. People who read the scripture, but don't do what's in it. I saw people who had very long copper nails, scratching their own faces and chests with them. I asked Jibril, who are these people? He said, these are the people who were gossiping about others and accusing them in their honor. I saw people getting their heads repeatedly smashed by huge rocks, then fixed back to its original form, then smashed again, and so on. Those were the people who were not doing their prayers on time. I saw people in hellfire getting extremely hungry and ask for food. They were served something that looks like discharge of wounds. And even after they ate it, hunger didn't go away. I saw people wearing garments of fire hot liquid like molten lava being poured over their heads, melting their insides and their skins. 
and for them there were mazes of iron. Whenever they tried to escape out of hell, they were forced back into it and were told, Taste the torment of burning. هذان خصمان اختصموا في ربهم فالذين كفروا قطعت لهم ثياب من نار يصب من فوق رؤوسهم الحميم يصهر به ما في بطونهم والجلود ولهم مقامع من حديد كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها من غم أعيدوا فيها وذوقوا عذاب الحريق I saw people blaming Iblis for their destiny Satan until he rose and gave his final speech to everyone in hellfire. I was shocked by his speech. Iblis standing in the middle of hellfire and all the people in hell listening to him. He said, Indeed Allah has made you a true promise. I too made you a promise, but I failed you. I didn't have any authority over you. I only called you and you responded to me. So, do not blame me. Blame yourselves. I cannot save you, nor you can save me. Indeed, I denounce your previous association of me with Allah and loyalty. Surely the wrongdoers will suffer a painful punishment. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فلا تلوموني ولوموا أنفسكم ما أنا بمصرخكم وما أنتم بمصرخي إني كفرت بما أشركتموني من قبل إن الظالمين لهم عذاب أليم Then I saw that death was brought in a form of a sheep in a place between hellfire and paradise so everyone will see it and it was said people of paradise people of hell this is death this sheep then the sheep got slaughtered. People of paradise, you will be there forever, no death. People of hell, you will be there forever, no death. Immortality for everyone. When the disciples of the Prophet heard all that, they were shocked. O Prophet of Allah, we try to be 100% perfect and never sin, but no matter how hard we try, we still slip. We're afraid. We sin every now and then. How can we ask Allah for mercy on us? We can't endure all that. He responded, No, 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 you don't understand. All of the things that I saw in my time travel journey to the hereafter were on the disbelievers and sinners' side. Do you know what I saw on the righteous servant's side? I saw the whole day of judgment pass in five minutes. Like a small prayer to rak'at. I saw a man celebrating in joy when he got his record in his right hand, running towards his family to show off his amazing score. I saw people passing the Sirat like wind. I saw people passing the Sirat like thunder. I saw that paradise has what no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard, and no heart have ever imagined. I saw God's mercy surpassing everyone's expectations. I saw forgiveness after forgiveness after forgiveness. هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفيظ من خشى الرحمن بالغيب وجاء بقلب منيب ودخلوها بسلام ذلك يوم الخلود لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا مزيد. It was said to them, This is what you were promised. For whoever constantly turns to Allah for repentance and kept his commandments, who feared the most merciful without seeing him, and came with a clean heart that always turned back to Allah after every slip. Enter paradise in peace. This is the day of eternal life. Here you will have whatever you desire, and we even have more. Before I go, I have two quick messages. First, a message for non-Muslims. What are you waiting for? Why aren't you reading the Quran, investigating whether it's from God or not? Why aren't you doubting what your society and media have been feeding you from your childhood? Why do you take their claims for granted? Why don't you keep the arrogance aside and read for yourself to see who is saying the truth and who is lying? 
Millions and millions of people every year are investigating the truth, discovering how they have been lied to all their lives, discovering God, discovering the truth, and taking their shahada, starting their new lives as devout Muslims. And subhanallah, from my experience, they become even better than other Muslims. We see thousands of priests and preachers becoming Muslims every year. Hindus, Jews, atheists, agnostics, from every country, from every culture, every age group, every ethnicity, everywhere around the world, people are finding God. What are you waiting for? If you have any questions regarding what we talked about, write them down in the comments below. I will make sure to answer each one of them, one by one. And if you need help reading and translating the Quran, join our group reading sessions on Discord. Link is in the description. The second message is for Muslims who are in ghafla, who got stuck into dunya pursuing fleeting pleasures and worshipping their desires. God said in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 27, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum, wa yuridu alladheena yattabi'oona shahawati an tamilu maylan ghazeema. Allah wants to accept your repentance and wants those who follow their desires to digress into a great deviation, to take a U-turn back to Him. God also said in Quran chapter 39 verse 53, Oh my servants who have exceeded their limits against their souls, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly gives forgiveness to all sins. He is indeed all forgiving, most merciful. And finally, Quran 57, 16. Has the time not yet come for the believer's heart to be humbled at the remembrance of Allah and what has been revealed of the truth? and not be like those who were given the scripture before, those who were spoiled for so long that their hearts became hardened, and many of them are rebellious. This was a part of our full video, The Prophet's Time Machine. If you haven't seen it fully, you missed out a lot. I promise it will change your life. To watch it, click on the link in the description below, or if you are watching on YouTube, it will appear in front of you on the screen right now. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Thanks and salam alaikum.